Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. J.P. Lindstroth, and I'm here uh, invited by the Hispanic and Latino Studies Institute to give a talk on the U.S.-Mexican border based on my award-winning book, um, Epical Reckonings. And the um, this book won the 2019 Proverse Prize, and um, so the today I'm going to talk about um, the U.S.-Mexican border in relation to the poems in, in this book. The book Epical Reckonings is a book of political poetry, and um, it is um, available on Amazon.com. Uh, I believe the selling price is $18. And um, so there you can see my name. Just a little bit about myself. Um, I have a PhD from the University of Oxford in England. And I've been with the school district for four years now. I teach uh, world history honors for Royal Palm Beach High School. And, um, and so it's a pleasure for me to be here today. And I want to especially thank Brian Knowles uh, for the invitation and all the other um, uh, people who've helped me uh, make this presentation re a reality, Finley's Henry. And um, a little bit about me, I've been teaching for um, 24 years now, mostly in higher education. And uh, I've written quite a bit um, academically and uh, I've written about the Guatemala Mayan population, Hispanic population here. And so um, what I'd like to do today is discuss the uh, poems in relation to the border and I'm going to screen share now with you. Um, so I'm going to go to my desktop and um, go to slideshow. Tell you from the beginning. I'm going to hide me. Um, so the book Epical Reckonings uh, won the 2019 Proverse Prize. It was co-winner. Uh, the book itself is about calamities in the early part of the 21st century, including Hurricane Katrina, including Abu Ghraib, including 9-11, including the civil war in Yemen, including the murders of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown in the school shooting at um, Parkland, Stone, Mary Stoneman Douglas High School. And so uh, today what I'd like to do is talk about the, the four poems that are related to U.S.-Mexican border, and if you're interested in using the book for a class um, to discuss immigration, I think you, using poetry in this way is a good way to start uh, to understand how to um, how to introduce students to um, such a, a very complex topic, um, U.S. immigration issue. Um, so the first poem in the series of the U.S.-Mexican border is called The Crossing. The Crossing. Uh, the next one is called El Norte or the North. The next one is called Echo por un Grito Moderno or Echo for a Modern Cry. And the last one in this series is called Mexica which is named after the Aztecs, which is where the Mexico got its name. 
So um, going to move the screen forward here. Sorry about that. This is the front cover of the, the book and the back cover of the book. And um, you can see that it was reviewed by several people. And now I'd like to read these poems and we can I'll try to have a discussion uh, following them. The Crossing. Across stark ravines and arroyos, they crossed the Sonora. They were three plus their coyote. Organ pipe cacti stood tall in blue shadows as if hidden men staring at them, they crossed. It was very, very dark except for a lantern moon. Its orb some enormous fish's eye in the great deep. Illuming depths of a fathomless ocean in the pitch blackness winking in and out of thin clouds crossing the dark skies. Along a worn sandy path, they encountered a woman and her child. They shared a cantina of tepid water. And if you could see their faces, you would see their desperation. But their faces were black in the shadows. And even in the cold desert night, they were sweating. Of a sudden, there was a helicopter overhead irradiating the organ pipe cacti and the sagebrush and the sand. And this great light searched them out. This light, like a great illumined eye, found them as they were caught by the great beam. They began running in all directions, panicked and scared, like lizards scurrying toward the shade of rocks in a beaming sun and yet hiding from the raptor's eye of some maniacal, mechanical, immense eagle. From a distance, headlights could be seen coming toward them, converging on them in three directions, kicking up dust in the beams. Six shafts of light moving up and down with the rusty dust wafting into the night air as organ pipe cacti and sagebrush illumined, throwing haphazard shadows in the cold desert night. And that's the crossing. The next poem follows along with that. And I think it's obvious with the imagery that you have these migrants, mi migrants mainly coming from El Salvador and Honduras and Guatemala, but also Mexico trying to make the, the dangerous crossing to the United States, which I've written quite a bit about in opinion editorials as well as in academic writing about the Guatemala Maya population in South Florida. El Norte, the North. Dust swirling around six headlights, bright glaring, blinding white SUVs, a surrounding darkness. Lights from vehicles, spotlights also, red blue lights flashing in the desert shadowy glimpses of organ pipe cacti and sagebrush casting weird shadows, border patrol and white lettering within green bands, green uniform men radios cracking voices indistinctive, organ pipe cacti and the shadows beyond the bright lights enveloped in pitch darkness standing like sentries. Three men kneeling hands on heads, illuminated fiercely pierced by the glare glowing in the dust under the glow of headlights and swirling dust, two with baseball caps, red and blue, shadowed brown faces, gloved hands, cinching plastic ties. A loud engine, a helicopter overhead, loud woofing, another searching spotlight, a light moving indiscriminately, illuminating organ pipe cacti and sagebrush and sand. Three murmuring under breath and distinctive. Smell of sweat, smell of sweat socks in the van. Tennis shoes with laces gone. In the darkness, three men hunched over, drawn up, dirty, dusty, blue jean knees. Jostling from the dirt road in the desert. 
heads bobbing side to side, sweating. And again, you can see here the imagery of the Border Patrol having picked up individuals that had tried to cross into the US, into the United States from Mexico. The next poem is a bit different. It carries on with the same theme, but in this case, you have a child who had been separated from her parents, a child who is in a detention facility as a, as a border patrol officer looks after her, but she can't be consoled. And so the poem is called Echo por un grito moderno, Echo for a modern cry which is based on the painting of David Alfaro Siqueiros, a Mexican artist, which inspired me to write the poem. Um, the painting, if you know it, um, is a, depicts a child's head growing larger and larger in a scream from poverty and from starvation. But in this case, we're talking about a child left alone, well, left in the care of a detention facility along the border. Echo por un grito moderno. A room lit, blazing, glaring, fluorescent lights, cold and nondescript. A detention facility in El Norte. The wee hours of morning, mama! The wailing voice of a small child. Mama! Only three or four. Wailing inconsolably, her tiny fist pounding the small table. A uniformed woman murmuring, indistinctive, sliding over coloring books into rainbow of crayons to the little pounding hands, the little hands shoving them away, carelessly, without care. Mama! On a shelf nearby, children's books, colorful books, lettered child blocks, wooden, bright letters. Some stuffed dolls, a Winnie the Pooh, a Mickey Mouse, a Donald Duck. The Donald Duck's eyes chewed out, cartoon arch blue eyes with irises gone, face chewed up with a perfect blue suit and a perfect blue hat. It's yellow bill with white stuffing coming out. Mama! A child's face in agony, red from crying, brown from the sun. Sweaty strands of black hair crisscrossing the small forehead. An echo por un grito moderno. A child's face from David Alfaro Siqueiros, crying and wailing and inflating larger and larger. A child's mouth becoming a great chasm of wailing. Mama, filling the room in eternal absence. The next poem really describes more about Mexico. And as I mentioned, the Mexicas from the Nahuatl, from the Aztecs who called themselves Mexica. So hence the name Mexico and hence the name from um, the Nahuatl language. And there's images in the poem uh, from Jose Clemente Orozco to the Nobel laureate poet, Mexican poet, Octavio Paz to um, Rufino Tamayo. And so, you, so I, I intersperse uh, Mexican artists in my writing to, to give an image, um, if you're familiar with their paintings and their, their work and trying to paint in words, the feelings um, and the, the sentiments surrounding um, the imagery. Mexica. There the white ghost of Hernan Cortez, his phantom pallid arm covering the naked body of La Malinche, 
her brown skin hand in hand, white on brown, brown on white, over the dead body of a Mexican, visions of Jose Clemente Orozco, personified, balanchista, tongues wagged, Doña Maria, Virgen of Guadalupe, visions of virgins, visions of Quetzalcoatl, smells of charred corn, rounded tortillas baking on clay comales, round as the moon. Last night in your bed, eramos tres, tu, yo, y la luna. The spake Octavio Paz, mestiza, mestizos, Mexicans, Nueva España, children of the moon, Mexica, Tenochtitlan, Mexitli, let the great eagle eat the great snake. On cacti, on many cacti, walls of cacti, you are nothing to us, they said. You are invisible, invisible people, non-people, invisible. Moctezuma dead and feathered in golden refinery, refinery with jade in abundance. Stacking skulls into walls, wisti lopostli, unbearable sun, son of God, bloody on the cross, revenge for the Alamo, San Jacinto, beginning of an end. By 1845, Texas hours. By 1848, California and Nevada hours. By 1848, Arizona and New Mexico hours. By 1848, Colorado and Utah hours. Polk's little war. Rufino Tamayo dogs barking approaching city of lights in the ebony desert, the unforgiving desert, a Tamayo luna in grayish haze, sculpted black escarpments far away on the outskirts of civilization, dogs barking. And here, uh, what I'd like to do is go over the imagery of this poem in particular, because I think it's uh, a little bit difficult to understand if you don't, if I don't really go through the imagery in here. We have Hernan, Hernan Cortez, who's the conquistador from Spain who um, conquered the Aztecs. La Malinche was his translator lover. Jose Clemente Orozco is a famous Mexican artist who painted them together over the body of a Mexican. And La Malinche, the word um, itself has been connotated with, with being bad, with evil, with many things. And I intersperse the image of Virgin of Guadalupe, which is the famous virgin, as well as visions of Quetzalcoatl because Hernan Cortes was supposed to be the returning god, Quetzalcoatl, the, fe the, the feathered serpent, the god of knowledge. And here I intersperse images of the moon, tortillas baked on a comale, which is the traditional way to bake tortillas, very ancient Mesoamerican, Mesoamerican way of making tortillas. And here Octavio Paz says, you, me, and the moon together. Last night in your bed, we were three, you, me, and the moon. Again, the moon imagery and the mestizo imagery, mestiza, mestizos, Mexicans. Tenochtitlan is the um, ancient site in central Mexico near Mexico City, um, which is a pre-classic site and uh, one of the most important archeological sites in Mexico. Here you have, oops, I wanna go back, oops, go back here. The, the eagle eating the great snake is the, the imagery of the Aztecs where they, where, um, sorry, Tenochtitlan is the city of the Aztecs, Teotihuacan is the, great site uh, for near Mexico City. Tenochtitlan is the, is the city of the Aztecs, which is built on a lake. And supposedly the, the sign for them to build the city 
was a snake eating, was it, sorry, an eagle eating a snake on a cactus. And that's when they knew that that's where to build the city of Tenochtitlan. Um, let me, so it says on cacti and walls of cacti. And again, the chorus of there, you are nothing to us, you are invisible, invisible people, non-people invisible. The idea that immigrants and Mexicans are invisible to us, invisible to us in our society as well, invisible to us in many ways, even though we have migrants who pick our vegetables and fruit, who work in our kitchens, who cook, cook in the kitchens and restaurants and take care of our children in some cases and do the landscaping, but in many ways are invisible people but many ways do the, the, the jobs that, that many Americans don't want to do. So, so I'm sorry that I, I confused Teotihuacan with Tenochtitlan, but anyway, Tenochtitlan is the city of the Aztecs. And Montezuma dead and feathered and golden were finally in jade abundance. Again, the imagery of Montezuma, the once great Aztec king being murdered by the conquistadors. Huistilopochtli is the god of sun, the god of um, god of war as well. And again, mixing images of Christ. And here you have the revenge for the Alamo, revenge for uh, what happened um, in the Alamo, different battles, San Jacinto. By 1845, Texas belonged to the United States. By 1848, after the, Span after the Mexican American War, 1846 to 1848, all this territory was part of the United States, California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah, all acquired after Polk's, President Polk's little war was called, um, which was provoked, it was provoked uh, where we sent our troops down to the border and where we placed them, provoked the Mexicans to respond, knowing that they would respond and knowing that we would begin this war and taking over really half of Mexico. Orfina Tamayo is one of the great Mexican artists who, write, who paints abstract moons and dogs and and again, I wanted to provide that imagery of the Tamayo Luna, the type of moon escape and the dogs barking on the outskirts of cities, as well as have that idea of the dogs barking on the outskirts of cities, like this idea that you're approaching a city uh, as a migrant, moving toward civilization somehow, moving toward the United States, on the outskirts of civilization, dogs barking, kind of a lonely scape. In any event, um, the, the US-Mexican border and the immigration policy in the United States is very complex. Um, I'm not gonna discuss all of it here and now, but um, I think that my poems, I think, stand out as a way of an inroad of discussing these issues, these topics, and um, provide the avenue as, of, as an introduction to the topic of immigration. Um, go back. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. In any event, you're uh, more than welcome to try to, um, if you'd like to purchase my book, I'd be glad to sign it for anybody at the conference. And uh, my email information is available to the conference organizers. Mr. Brian Knowles has it, um, as well as Fernalise Henry. And I'd like to thank them again. And thank you all for listening to my talk about my award-winning book, at least part of it, the part of the U.S.-Mexican border. So um, 
wishing you all a pleasant conference. And thank you again for listening to my talk.